Woodman here. You know, sometimes when we're fighting a war and we're trying to claim towns and villages and various lands, let's say you're a general, you're going to have to consider various strategies to ensure a decisive victory. One of the most effective, albeit ruthless, strategies is to burn the fields and to destroy the local economies. This approach, often referred to as a scorch earth campaign, is designed to cripple the opposition's war-making capacity by depriving them of essential resources. By destroying the means of agricultural production, the enemy is left without food and supplies, which can lead to starvation and demoralization, disrupting the supply chain, and therefore uh, seeding discord amongst the ranks and lowering the morale of the civilian population. You can think of it as like the Emperor card in Tarot. Uh, the Emperor is uh, brutally destructive and, and for a reason, because you have to compound the enemy's difficulties. In war, economies are crucial for the morale and functionality of both military and civilian sectors. By targeting certain economic structures, such as markets, factories, and storage facilities, a general can disrupt the flow of goods and services that sustain the enemy's war effort. This disruption can lead to shortages of essential items, uh, inflation, inflation sorry, in the economy, uh, as well as a collapse in local trade, all of which weaken the enemy's resolve and the ability to continue fighting. Uh, once you decimate uh, the economy and therefore the infrastructure of the people, um, this is going to really um, wound the psyche of the enemy. War is not just a physical battle, but it's also a mental and psychological one. When an enemy witnesses their lands being ravaged, their crops burned, and their towns destroyed, it sends a powerful message of dominance and hopelessness, which is absolutely important if you want to crush resistance. This psychological warfare aims to break the spirit of the enemy, leading to a quicker surrender or at least a reduction in their willingness to resist. The demoralizing effect it can be as powerful as any military victory on the battlefield. And this is especially necessary when you're fighting someone on their home turf. Because very few battles can be easily won on someone's home turf unless you are willing to commit the resources and the ruthlessness necessary to crush resistance. Another critical component of the Scorch Earth policy um, is that you really have to strike hard at the supply chains. The supply chains are the lifelines of military operations, a major railroad center, a supply depot, and manufacturing hub are strategic targets that if captured can effectively cut off the enemy's ability to resupply their troops with weapons, ammunition, food, and other essentials. Disrupting these supply lines forces the enemy to stretch their resources thin and hamper their operational capabilities. You can imagine that as an enemy is spreading from east to west across the land that if their home base is towards the east, at some point, if you can cut off a supply chain in between the east and the west where their army, armies are currently perhaps overextended, uh, you can really cause a huge damage because at that point, they're not going to be able to resupply and they're going to have to ration out uh, uh, smaller and smaller portions of food and other supplies and this is going to really demoralize the troops. Um, this not only disrupts the logistical network of the enemy, but it also provides strategic mobility uh, for the attacking forces, allowing them to move quickly and efficiently to different fronts. Uh, and, and a supply depot is, on, you know, as I mentioned before, is a critical target. Uh, these depots are where the enemy stores large quantities of supplies, from food to medical supplies to weapons, as well as ammunition. So blowing up a munitions depot uh, can can really, really uh, cause a lot of havoc and chaos. Destroying or capturing these depots depletes the enemy's reserves, forcing them into a position of scarcity, right? And, and that's what a lot of economies are trying to avoid, is scarcity. The scarcity can lead to lower morale among troops as they face the prospect of fighting without adequate supplies. You know, that, in other words, um, if you're running out of bullets, you know, where are you going to get um, other bullets from if, you're, if your munitions uh, supply chain is disrupted? So you, this will give the attacking forces a huge uh, tactical advantage. 
Manufacturing hubs are also the backbone of a war economy because you can continue to produce weapons, vehicles, and other equipment needed to sustain your military operations. But by targeting these hubs, a general can halt the production of vital war materials, creating a bottleneck in the enemy supply chain. You know, from an economic standpoint, they say that war is a major boost to an economy because of the fact that the necessity of people to uh, create and produce um, during wartime is absolutely amplified. Um, but nonetheless, um, once you cut that supply chain off, once you, once you start to disrupt those markets, you are going to cause incredible havoc on the economy of, of the defending force. So overall, the scorched earth policy is necessary to destroy resistance, both uh, physically and mentally and psychologically, and it will crush the psyche of the enemy at its core. While it's harsh and even controversial as a strategy, it's necessary because its effectiveness lies in its ability to simultaneously, uh, simultaneously attack the physical and psychological foundations of the enemy's war effort. By removing the resources needed to fight and survive, and by delivering a powerful psychological blow, a general can hasten the end of conflict and secure a decisive victory. Because sometimes what you'll have is you'll have an enemy that's stubborn, right? This stubborn enemy doesn't know when they have lost from a tactical standpoint. Maybe, maybe they're too dense to figure it out, right? Maybe um, they just uh, have this sort of um, sense of honor. Or this oath, or maybe they're just miserable people that just don't quit. Whatever it might be, when you come up against this kind of situation, there's really nothing you can do but to be ruthless because extending mercy is going to allow uh, these forces to uh, uh, mobilize once more, to get their act together. Um, and so the, the kindness that you show one day may lead to further problems down the line when they try to strike back, um, believing that they still have a chance of moving forward. So this is why psychological is a huge part of the scorched earth policy by seeing their fields going up in flames, by seeing their towns going up in flames, by seeing their economy being crushed. Um, that has a, a deep lasting psychological impact. One that not only crushes the spirit, but um, may very well uh, have an impact on, for generations. Because um, not only will the parents remember that, or the grandparents remember that, but the kids and the grandkids will remember that. Um, it, it, it just is a powerful reminder that resistance, uh, you know, as they say, what, what Star Trek and the Borg? Resistance is futile, right? That feeling of hopelessness you get when you feel like it's a battle that you can't win, that is a powerful, powerful way to break someone's psyche. So I hope you've enjoyed this message. If you're new here, welcome aboard. It's a safe place. If you're returning, thank you for your support. You make this channel possible. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this message. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.